A massive Russian missile attack on Ukraine killed 44 people and injured 196 others. The Children's Hospital in Kiev was among the Russian targets. Unfortunately, we started the surgery before the air raid alert started. Norway will donate six F-16s to Ukraine while jets from other countries are already on the way. Those jets will be flying in the skies of Ukraine this summer. World leaders met in Washington, D.C. for the 75th NATO summit. What were their decisions on Ukraine? Ukraine will prevail. Hi, I'm Daniel Kasoy, and this is United 24 Media. 33 people, including five children, were killed as a result of the Russian bombing of civilian targets in Kiev on Monday. More than 100 civilians were injured. Almost 800 people from all the districts of Kiev were involved in rescue operations and clearing up the devastation left behind by the rocket attacks. Among the places Russian forces targeted was the Children's Hospital, Akhmadit, which is an abbreviation for Hospital for the Safety of Mothers and Children. Two people were killed in the Russian attack on this medical facility, and 32 were wounded. Eight children were hospitalized with injuries. On Thursday, health minister stated that a young boy who was in the intensive care unit at the time of the rocket strike had passed away after being transferred to another hospital in Kyiv. Today, it emerged that another child who was in Akhmadet at the time of the strike has died. According to the Ukraine Forum News Agency, seven-year-old Yegor had been hospitalized after falling off his bicycle. Following surgery, he went into a coma. After Monday's attack, the boy was transferred to another hospital in Kyiv, where he passed away today. Our colleague, Makita Luchenko, was on the site of the Russian strike, and here is what he saw. Currently, we are at the territory of Children's Hospital, where civilians, policemen, soldiers, and uh, rescuers are sorting through the debris to save as many people as possible in first three hours. This is the so-called golden hour. We've seen dead bodies, we've seen wounded. Uh, one of the massive attack, uh, missile attack to our hometown. It's uh, different districts. Uh, we have uh, a lot of buildings destroyed uh, from the part of uh, the missiles. Uh, here we see uh, uh, the medical center, uh, children medical center, Ahmadid. We have a lot of children who is injured. There was an air raid alert. We evacuated the children, but our building was damaged. This is a very important part of the hospital because children with chronic and acute renal failure are treated here. The head of the chronic intoxication department was seriously injured and an ambulance has already taken her to another hospital. We are evacuating all the children now. A couple of hours have passed and the next air raid alarm is sounding, so everybody's taking cover. During this subsequent alert, a ballistic missile hit a medical facility on the left bank of Kyiv, where seven more people were reported killed. As soon as Russian forces attacked the Children's Hospital, the residents of Kyiv arrived at the scene to help. Alongside the rescuers, civilians helped clear rubble and brought food and water. Over 30 countries worldwide are offering to treat the Ukrainian children affected by the July 8th bombing of the Ahmadid Hospital. The Ukrainian Minister of Health stated that ambassadors from various nations, including the U.S. and several European countries, have expressed their readiness to assist in the treatment of Ukrainian pediatric patients. According to him, the sick children are currently redistributed among various hospitals around the city. If necessary, they will be sent abroad. When the Russian missile struck the Akhmadit Children's Hospital, Ihor Kholodka was in the middle of performing surgery on a five-month-old infant. The blast wave threw the surgeon across the room. He and his colleague were injured from shattered glass. Usually when there's an air raid alert, everyone goes to the shelter, said the surgeon. 
But because the surgery was already ongoing, the team had no opportunity to stop, not even for a second. Unfortunately, we started the surgery before the air raid alert started. When you've started the procedure and you're in the middle of such a surgery, you can't stop at this moment because you know that you'd have to close the incision so that the patient doesn't lose blood. Only then you can end it. Thank God the child wasn't hurt at all. We wrapped the child so that everything would be sterile. As my colleague was standing with his back to the windows, the shrapnel hit him and spared the child. We joked that he took the hit with his back and I took it with my face. As soon as the infant was evacuated to a safe place, the surgeon stopped his own bleeding. After that, he hurried to the destroyed toxicology department to help the injured and clean up the rubble. I think these are the normal actions of a normal person to go and help, considering this is our home, you know? It's like cleaning up your own house. The security service of Ukraine shared evidence that the Children's Hospital in Kiev was hit with a Russian Ha-101 cruise missile after investigators found fragments at the site. According to experts, this strike was a targeted attack by Russian forces. This is evidenced not only by the recovered missile wreckage, but also from analysis of the flight path data, the nature of the damage, and a substantial amount of video and photo materials. On the same day, 14 people were killed in a Russian strike on an apartment block in Kiev. One of the entrances to the building was completely destroyed. Among those killed were five children. More than 20 people were injured. On Monday, Russian forces also attacked the Dnipropetrovsk region. 10 people were killed in Kriveri. More than 50 were injured. In total, the massive Russian missile attack on Ukraine on July 8th killed 44 people and injured 196 others. The commander of the Air Force, Mykola Olashuk, reported that Russia launched a total of 38 missiles of various types on Ukraine in the morning of July 8th. Ukrainian air defenses destroyed 30 of them. According to him, among the rockets Russia launched in their attack were three Kinzhal ballistic missiles, four Iskander-M ballistic missiles, one Zircon cruise missile, 13 Ha-101 cruise missiles, 14 Kaliber cruise missiles, two Ha-22 cruise missiles, three Ha-59, Ha-69 guided missiles. Norway will donate six F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, announced the country's prime minister, Jonas Gar Sture. In the statement, he underlined that Ukraine's ability to defend itself against air attacks is crucial in the battle against Russia. Norway already plans to start making the delivery this year. In Washington, the Norwegian prime minister also announced that the country will allocate almost $93 million to support Ukraine's air defense. Meanwhile, Sweden is ready to transfer Gripen fighters to Ukraine. This was stated by the country's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tobias Billström. However, Ukraine's decision to prioritize F-16s due to their wider availability within NATO currently puts Gripen deliveries on hold. At the same time, Billström underlined that Sweden remains open to future discussions once Ukraine completes the integration of the F-16s. An oil depot in Kalachon Don and a substation in Forlovo caught fire in Russia's Volgorod region early in the morning of July 9. Local residents posted on social media that they heard a series of explosions leading to the fires. According to the regional governor, the Volgograd region was attacked by drones at night. He assured that air defense and electronic warfare forces prevented the strikes, but some debris fell on a substation and oil depot starting a fire. The United States is in talks with Ukraine regarding granting permission to use American long-range weapons for strikes on the territory deep into Russia. This was reported by Chris Smith, U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary, in an interview for The Voice of America. He said that Washington is working closely with their Ukrainian counterparts to adapt and adjust the security assistance and the guidelines the U.S. provides with that assistance to counter threats. While visiting Washington, D.C., Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky delivered a speech at the Ronald Reagan Institute. He condemned Russia's assault on a children's hospital in Kiev and emphasized the ongoing need for support. The Ukrainian president also discussed topics such as limitations on using military weaponry. Imagine how much we can achieve when all limitations are lifted. Similarly, now we can protect our cities from Russian guided bombs if American leadership makes a step forward and allows us to destroy Russian military aircrafts on their bases. This will also yield an instant result. 
And we are waiting for this step. And we can significantly limit Russian actions in southern Ukraine and push the occupier out of there if American leadership assists us with the necessary deep strike capabilities against Russian military and logistics in our Ukrainian Crimea. This week, Washington hosted the NATO summit, which brought together leaders and representatives from all member countries. In particular, they reached a critical agreement to allocate a minimum of 40 billion euros annually in military aid to Ukraine, starting in 2025. That's not the only decision that was made about Ukraine. To find out what else, check out our latest report. Ukraine will prevail. That's how the 75th NATO summit started for Ukraine. The U.S. President Joe Biden announced the historic transfer of additional air defense systems. The United States, Germany, the Netherlands, Romania, and Italy will provide Ukraine with the equipment for five additional strategic air defense systems. And in the coming months, the United States and our partners intend to provide Ukraine with dozens of additional tactical air defense systems. Ukraine will not only get new Patriots, but also the SAMP-T system. Additionally, Kyiv will be equipped with NASAMS, Hawk, Iris-T, and Gepard. And there was one further announcement about the much-needed F-16 jets. As we speak, the transfer of F-16 jets is underway, coming from Denmark, coming from the Netherlands. And those jets, those jets will be flying in the skies of Ukraine this summer. Member states also decided to create a new military command named NATO Security and Training Assistance for Ukraine. Located in Germany and led by a U.S. three-star general, this structure will oversee the training and equipping of Ukrainian troops across various allied nations. We will not be dragged into Putin's reckless war of choice. But we will stand by Ukraine as it fights for its sovereignty and security. We will defend every inch of NATO and we will continue to strengthen NATO's collective defense and deterrence. The Washington Summit Declaration includes a separate section on political relations with Ukraine. In particular, members of NATO will continue to support Kyiv on its, as they stated, irreversible path to full Euro-Atlantic integration, including NATO membership. Allies also intend to provide a minimum of $40 billion annually in military aid to Ukraine, starting in 2025. If, the, if there is now a new ceasefire, a new agreement, then we need to be 100% certain that it stops there, regardless of where, the, where that line is. Uh, and therefore, I strongly believe that when the fighting stops, we need to ensure that Ukraine has the, the, the capabilities to deter future aggression uh, from Russia. In Washington, the Canadian Prime Minister announced a new military aid package for Ukraine, valued at more than $350 million. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stated that member countries will provide more than $7 million to support women in the Ukrainian armed forces, including more than 10,000 uniforms, boots, and other necessary equipment. The Pentagon officially announced a new military aid package for Ukraine, which has an estimated value of $225 million. This will include one Patriot battery, which was announced by President Biden earlier this week. In the list of capabilities, there are also munitions for NASAMs, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, 155mm artillery rounds, javelin systems, and other weapons. This will be the 61st tranche of equipment to be provided by the Department of Defense inventories for Ukraine since August 2021. In the coming months, Ukrainian Defense Forces will receive the first 18 Bogdana wheeled self-propelled howitzers, which were financed by Denmark. The country's defense minister stated that the assistance in production of this particular weapon is based on the recommendations of Ukraine's Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Strategic Industries. According to the Danish defense minister, such agreements have obvious logistical advantages and at the same time contribute to the development of the defense industry in Ukraine. Belarusian and Chinese troops have started joint tactical drills near the Polish border. According to the Belarusian Ministry of Defense, the military forces of both countries are set to train in a series of strategic maneuvers, including night landing, overcoming water obstacles, and conducting operations in populated areas. These drills, called Falcon Assault, will take place until July 19th. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged Vladimir Putin to end the war in Ukraine. According to NDTV, during the informal meeting, he told the Russian self-proclaimed president that a solution cannot be found on the battlefield. Later, while visiting the Kremlin in Moscow, he said that he had spent around five hours the previous day with Putin in his residence. Modi also underlined the importance of peace and stated that it can only be achieved through talks. I am happy that we openly discussed the issue of Ukraine in detail, and we tried to listen and respectfully understand each other's opinions when there is war, battles, or even militant attacks. Every person who believes in humanity feels pain when they see death, especially when innocent children are killed. The sight of innocent children dying shatters the heart, and that pain is extremely horrific. I had a detailed discussion on this issue with you. Though Modi didn't mention if he was talking about the attack on Ukraine's children hospital. On his X page, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky posted about the Russian attacks on Ukraine, in particular, Omadet. He added that it was a huge disappointment and a devastating blow to peace efforts to see the leader of the world's largest democracy hugging the world's bloodiest criminal in Moscow on such a day. The Indian Prime Minister is visiting Russia on an official two-day trip. This is the first time he has been there since the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky and Prime Minister of Poland Donald Tusk signed an agreement on security cooperation between Ukraine and Poland. According to the document, Poland will consider transferring no fewer than one additional squadron of MiG-29 jets to Ukraine. That means at least 14 fighters. The document is the first among the already signed bilateral security agreements to provide for the possibility of intercepting missiles and drones in Ukraine's airspace that are launched towards Poland. We've agreed in a security agreement on forming and training a Ukrainian legion on the territory of Poland, a new military unit consisting of volunteers. We've had positive outcomes from the Ukrainian-Polish-Lithuanian Brigade. Based on this experience, we offer the opportunity to Ukrainian citizens that are already in Poland, Lithuania, and other EU countries to voluntarily join in defending Ukraine. During the NATO summit, the Polish foreign minister, Radoslav Sikorski, mentioned that several thousand people have already registered to participate in the Ukrainian Legion in Poland. According to him, Warsaw has already begun to prepare the first Ukrainian brigade, which consists of volunteers. Security agreements with two more countries, Luxembourg and Romania, were signed in Washington, D.C. In the document that Zelensky signed with the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Luke Frieden, is the promise to provide military assistance and support throughout the 10 years of the agreement with the same dynamics as in 2022, which was nearly $75 million. The document signed with the President of Romania details how Bucharest will transfer a Patriot system to Ukraine and support the country in the same way as in 2022-2024. Romania will also help facilitate the fastest possible transit of all necessary equipment through its territory to Ukraine. Kiev intends to hold a second summit on peace before the U.S. elections in November, this time with Russia's participation, states Bloomberg, citing sources familiar with the topic. The second initiative will follow the summit on peace for Ukraine held in Switzerland last month, which involved representatives from over 90 countries with Russia not invited. The urgency to organize the meeting before U.S. elections reflects Ukraine's concerns about the potential return of Donald Trump to the White House. At the same time, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Galuzin said that Russia declines to participate in Ukraine's planned second peace summit. The state-owned news agency RIA Novosti reports that Galuzin characterizes Ukraine's efforts to push forward President Zelensky's peace formula as ultimately futile. That's it for today. We are United24 Media. Thank you for being with us and see you next week.